God bless you, and, and we thank God for that anointed music. At this time, we have some great friends, and we have our special guests, uh, Brother Thomas and Brandy, Brandy Wine, Wake Rankins. Would you put your hands together and celebrate them? God bless you. Amen. Thank you for being here. Amen. Bless you all. Amen. Amen. So I, I need to know right now, because I know you go by Thomas the answer, the answer and the brandy answer. brandy wine yeah. so before we get started uh i need you to tell you about the and the, the answer and brandy wine and where that came from well the answer simply came from the fact that uh, i used to rap secularly i do a uh, gospel christian rap and uh secularly i had things that glorified myself that talked about you know how good i was and things of that nature and uh, once I was born again, you know, I didn't want me to be seen. I wanted to be a reflection of the Lord. You know, we're made in his image Amen. and likeness. So, you know, I went through a bunch of different things and I said, Lord, you are simply my answer. So I want when people see me, I don't want them to see me. I want them to see you, which is the answer. So that's what I came up with the answer. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. Now, what about brandy wine? Because I'm thinking of brandy wine. I'm thinking of going skiing. Okay. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> well, with brandy wine, I've been a spoken word artist for over eight years. And Brandywine is a nickname, and um, I'm a published author now, so I just included the nickname along with my full name, so it reads Brandy Brandywine Rankin. Amen, amen. I, I want to go back real quick, okay. uh, uh, Brother Thomas, uh, the answer, right. because the, you see, you said that you are a, a Christian rapper, correct? And you were previously a hip hop rap, rapper, right? Right. And, and I know that the church has mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. a little difficulty embracing and accepting. So tell right. me, how did you actually make the the change, the transition from hip hop to uh, being a Christian rapper? You know what? Uh, it took some time. Initially, in the beginning, when I first got started, I had never really heard anything. I, I come from a rough neighborhood. I wasn't. Uh, necessarily raised in the church so uh, I wasn't familiar with uh, a lot of you know the church culture and things of that nature so I was used to the streets so I tried you know once I got uh, baptized and saved and everything I tried to rap you know for the Lord but I was still compromising still you know straddling the fence and things like that and the, the Lord pricked my heart with the revelation scripture you know basically saying that I'd rather you not be uh, uh, cold or hot but or not be lukewarm rather i'm twisting scripture but um so i then uh heard some music one of my brothers in pennsylvania uh let me listen to and it really blessed my soul it was uh, it had the type of sound that i was used to except for it was the unadulterated word of god Amen. you know it wasn't watered down at all it really ministered to me to my heart and, uh, and it taught me as well. And that's when the Lord told me that, you know, it was okay to go ahead and do music for his glory, Amen. for his kingdom. And, you know, that represented and speak to people that kind of come from the place that I come from. Amen. Now, well, how did the church embrace that? Because I, I don't know your right, full right. church background, but I, I know that some churches are, you know, mm -hmm. we don't, we want our old traditional. Exactly. Uh, Jesus, exactly. keep me near the cross and rock of ages. Mm -hmm. And if you come in the mm -hmm. church with a little hip hop gospel, uh, how, right. how was that received? You know what? A lot of times, uh, initially in the beginning, it's, it's, it's usually, you know, people are kind of, uh, apprehensive about receiving it especially when you hear you know rap and that's actually why i came up with the title truth music for this album because you know rap in itself is different from hip-hop rap is pretty much rhyming over beats and things like that whereas hip-hop is more so cultural you mm -hmm. know it comes from a uh, you know lifestyle so the lord gave me truth music to say that i want to withdraw from the culture of hip-hop and step into something that was formed for him for his glory and that's where truth music came from but in the church it's always been a uh, initially like i say uh kind of difficult to get it across but once i usually go forth and um they amen. hear it you know they the word of god is the word of god amen you know you, amen. you can't deny that that's and right. you know it when you hear it when you study it when you have that relationship with him amen. you amen. can't deny that and that's all that's heard in my music is simply the word of god but just brought in a different form you know i use my art to communicate the gospel to individuals like myself amen so the art that you have of, of rapping hip-hop uh and the music spoken word how, how do, do the two of them come together as a husband and wife team well god has been allowing us to go out and minister a lot together mm -hmm. so um that's been a, a great blessing um we've been blessed to be able to speak at churches conferences right. schools so mm -hmm. uh, we go to non-traditional places as well as traditional places wherever we can to speak life mm -hmm. we're just willing to go and do it 
Amen. Now, when you're speaking, are you speaking of your personal life? Because I know that you've written several books, and one of the books is He Kept His Promise. Yes. Now, you have to tell me yes. uh, about how He Kept His Promise. Okay. Um, well, the book um, is called He Kept His Promise. How do you stand on the word of God when your legs of faith are broken? Wow. Yes. Right. Can yes. you say that again? Yes. <laughs> okay. He kept his promise. He kept his promise. How do you stand on the word of God when, when your, your legs, legs of faith, faith are, are broken. broken? I don't know. Tell me how. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, this book is my testimony. At the age of 21, I became a widow. My mm. first husband, he passed with cancer. Mm. Um, it was shortly after high school. I was freshly saved. I didn't understand why that had wow. to happen to me. And um, I turned away from God. I went back in the world. I began drinking, smoking, fornicating, anything that I could to try to fix a God-sized void that was in my spirit. Mm -hmm. But I learned the hard way that there was nothing out there that could fix what I was feeling but God. Mm -hmm. So God being sovereign allowed me to come back. And that is just so personal to me because a lot of times with people, when you do people wrong, they'll stop talking to you. They won't forgive you. Right. But God healed the slate is clean. He'll throw Amen. it as far as the east is from the west, and God did that for me. Amen. And so God began to minister to my hurt. And seven years later, God blessed me with another amazing husband. But that Amen. same year, my mom, she passed. She went to be home with the Lord. She had cancer. She had lung cancer. And my mom didn't have any life insurance. So we literally had to raise $4,600 within three days wow. to bury my mom. Wow. And God is awesome because we held two car washes. Um, mm. I put together a short bio saying, help us bury our mother. And at first, I had pride issues with that. I didn't want to ask mm. people for money, but right. God said, are you going to allow pride to get in the way? Or are you going to allow me to meet your need? And mm. I went out there believing Jesus. God. And within three days, God not only gave us $4,600, God gave us $4,800. Wow. Bless God. And wow. that was in Amen. June. And the next month in July, my husband's grandfather suddenly passed away. In August, they fired me from my job because of the mm. time that I had to take off. They said, we're sorry you having so many tragedies this year. But what wow. happens if somebody else in your family passed? And they fired me on the spot. And that same day, the bid on our first home was approved. So wow. I'm like, Lord, how wow. are we going to pay for this house now? Right. And my brother Jared told me, he said, if God gives it, gives it to you, he's going to make provision for you to keep it. Amen. And we went forth. And we got the keys on my birthday, October 6th. But a few days later, my husband pulled up at the property. The police was there because somebody broken in, stole all the copper plumbing and piping, and did over $9,000 worth of damage. Wow. The next month, my mother-in-law was diagnosed with heart failure. Her heart was supposed to be operating at like 55%. It was only operating at 5 And the next month, our van was stolen from in front of our church doing morning service, and it was broadcast okay, on the local news. Is there news. anything else that could <laughs> Wow. And if all that wasn't enough, <laughs> At the end of the year, our baby girl, I found out during my 30th week of pregnancy mm -hmm. that she had a blockage in her intestines. Okay. She was going to have three major surgeries. Mm -hmm. She spent the first seven months in the hospital, and she was on a ventilator um, three times. So I say all that to say that my faith, I wanted to give up. We wanted to give yes, up. Right, we didn't, yeah, under, we yes. didn't know if we was cursed. We didn't understand yes. why we had to go through all so these things challenges. back to back, mm -hmm. just like Job. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so God, the, the, the same floor that my baby girl was on was the same floor that my first husband passed. And God told me he brought me back, back to my place of pain to heal me. And so when all of it came full circle and we had our daughter at home, I said God kept his promise. Because the Bible says you yes, know if a, it's a word from God if it comes to pass. Amen. And that thing Amen. came to pass, Amen. and so Amen. I said, Amen. God Amen. kept his promise. And so it goes Amen. back to what you said at the beginning of the broadcast. How, how, you know, how do you stand on the word of God when your legs of faith are broken? You know, God is a healer. You know, Amen. God brings us from faith. He, he's the author and the finisher of our, our faith. faith. That's right. So a lot of times, even when we think that we're broken like bones, God will mend that thing back Amen. together. Amen. Because who would have thought that God would use both of us Amen. now to be able to go out and to speak life? from the healing and the things that we went through back then, we couldn't see what God would do with us. But, you know, God is amazing. He's, he's a keeper of his promise. He is a keeper of his promise, and I'm glad that you wrote that book and the testimony because that was very powerful, the synopsis that you just gave. But the question I want to know is, in the midst of that mm -hmm. taking place, all of those challenges, did you ever think about giving up? Yes. Oh, on in the towel, of telling course. God I'm, I'm quitting. Yes. Oh, yeah. 
definitely. It's, it's difficult when you go. None of us, you know, pretty much puts in an application to go through. Mm -hmm. right. But, you know, when you, when you have faith in the Lord, you know that there's nothing that he'll bring you to that he won't bring you through. And a lot of the things sounds cliche as, but when you really, really stand on the promises of God and you just, you know that you can't do anything, you can't, you know, worry to a certain extent because tomorrow has enough troubles of its own and uh you know when you're kind of going through you know just constantly praying constantly fasting and you're not necessarily seeing those results you know sometimes you get to a point to yes you may cry you know you mm -hmm. may cry out and just say lord i trust you i need you right now we're going to still continue to stand on your word and the promise that you said that you would heal and that you would deliver oh father god and you know it was it was tough there, there's someone else that's watching this broadcast mm -hmm. Uh, in the middle of the night, right. in the afternoon, in the morning, that's, that's hearing this testimony yes. that's going to be a blessing to them. Mm -hmm. And their crisis may be as severe, may not be, mm -hmm. but what advice can you give them from your own experience? Mm -hmm. You know, take a minute or so and, and just talk directly to the camera okay. because, and, and look at them and, and tell them, how, how do you, how can you survive and keep going with, with their crisis? Mm -hmm. what, okay. what can you well, I just want to say, first of all, that in pain, God's birth your power. And God is bigger than your situation and your circumstances. You know, the enemy wants us to give up. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but hope says try again. You know, God presses us through our pain to pray more, to fast more, to believe more. And I, we both are standard witnesses that if you just believe God, you know, the Bible says ears have not heard, um, neither has it entered into the hearts of men what God has for those who love him. And I just want to tell you to keep believing God, walk by faith. You got to see it in your mind through vision before you see it. So if it's a healing that you need, see your body healed. If it's finances, see your bank account overflowing. If it's marital problems, see that thing mended together and believe God. Stand on it. Get you a scripture and stand on the word of God. Amen.